We are following breaking news. Police in Oregon confirming just hours ago that a former cop and accused child rapist at the center of a massive manhunt shot himself earlier today. And the one-year-old boy he kidnapped is safe. Now, police say it happened as they were chasing Elias Wezar in a car near Eugene, Oregon. They say he shot himself in the head, but it's unclear what his condition is right now. Now, this is a look at a very active scene where that manhunt ended not too long ago, and it's all going down on Interstate 5 in Oregon. You see a bunch of police cars and officers surrounding that scene. Now, this all started yesterday after investigators say Wezar shot and killed his ex-wife outside of an elementary school in West Richland, Washington. They later found the body of his girlfriend at his house during a search, and then they realized a one-year-old named Roman Wezar was missing, leading to an Amber Alert. Now, it happened as Wezar was supposed to be in court yesterday on charges of child rape from an incident in February where he sexually assault, uh, allegedly sexually assaulted a teenage girl. It is a lot to break down. So NBC News correspondent Elwin Lopez joins us now. First off, Elwin, uh, so what do we know about his condition? He he shot himself. And, and what do we know about the condition of the, the baby here? Yeah, well, look at how busy that interstate was. So the, all of this happened during a busy time in Eugene, Oregon, and it happened after a police pursuit. So what we know from police is that he shot himself. They're saying that his condition is unknown, so they're not saying whether he's dead or not at this moment. The good news here is that that one-year-old boy is safe in sound in police custody. But again, we don't really know exactly the details as to how this police pursuit occurred specifically, whether he was seen in surveillance cameras or not, whether someone called, spotted. We know that he initially fled the scene in a Toyota Corolla, a silver Toyota, and then they spot him in Portland in a black sedan. So we don't really know the details as to what happened after he fled the scene, simply that he was spotted in Portland. And then, of course, everything ended that whole manhunt that literally i mean stretched from uh, washington to oregon and we know that u.s marshals and fbi were involved finally ended today and, and ellen I, I mean just looking at the details of this case it's a lot to take in you got allegations of like child rape of murder of kidnapping how did this all start yeah, so to get a full picture as to how this all took place, we have to go back to February. That's when he was accused of child rape. He pled not guilty, but in court documents, it alleges that he sexually assaulted an underage girl at his home while she was sleeping. Now, the one thing to point out here is that at that home, he was living with another underage girl that he met while he was a school resource officer at her middle school and that he shared a nine month old at the time with her. So that is what took place at that moment. And then after that is when police say he was set to appear in court on Monday. For one of those charges. Yes, for okay. that charge. And instead on that day, he went to the school where his ex-wife works. According to police, he shot and killed her there. And then police obtained a search warrant. They went to his home later that day, and that's when they found his girlfriend dead. So they believe he killed not only his ex-wife, but his girlfriend as well, and then took off with that one-year-old boy. What else do we know about his background? A, a former cop, yeah. a school resource officer at, yeah. at a middle school. What, what else can you tell so us? So I called Yakima Police Department and talked to them about his history. So he had been employed for nine years, and when they told me that he resigned, I asked, why did he resign? Was there something going on? They said, well, he did face disciplinary action right before he resigned. And when I asked specifically what that was in regard to, they did not elaborate, right. right? So we do know that he's 39 years old, that he did have that disciplinary action. He resigned after that, but he was a school resource officer and worked at the school as recently as last year. I mean, it just seems like red flag after red flag Absolutely. after red flag. Absolutely. Ellen, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, buddy. The police, sworn to protect and serve, but what happens when those sworn to uphold the law become the lawbreakers? It's a terrifying reality that has plagued communities for far too long. Across America, individuals with questionable qualifications and even more questionable morals have infiltrated police departments. These are not just a few bad apples. These are individuals who exploit their power, operating above the law they are meant to enforce. These officers engage in behavior ranging from petty theft and corruption to excessive force and even murder. They operate with impunity, shielded by a culture of silence known as the Blue Wall. This unwritten code demands loyalty to fellow officers, even at the expense of justice. It discourages whistleblowers and protects those who abuse their power. The result? A system where bad cops flourish and communities suffer.
This is not an attack on all police officers. There are countless brave and honorable men and women who wear the badge with integrity. They put their lives on the line every day to keep our community safe. But the actions of the corrupt few tarnish the reputation of the many. They erode public trust and make it harder for good officers to do their jobs. We must break down the blue wall of silence and hold all officers accountable for their actions. Thank you.